hit start record and say hello everyone and welcome to to be released i'm here with d free yo and that's it it's just, just gonna be me and d free for the next what? just me nah just kidding zen is eating ah. a sandwich right now so wow imagine eating a sandwich couldn't be me man no. uh, you know I, I'm, I'm i'm capping on him but uh i just got done eating one too myself like 30 minutes ago <laughs> Uh, I love that I've apparently amassed a bunch of friends who helped me record, but also on the deadline for when we have to record, decide to go eat a sandwich right before. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, what's quick? What can I eat? And I just, oh, I'll just eat the sandwich. I'm hungry. So there we go. Cool. <laughs> it all works out in the end. Definitely. Uh all right, so we also got you for about a good forty minutes. So let's just get let's get some good actual Dokkan stuff in here, since you're the one who actually gets to play with most of these units <laughs> <laughs> compared to me and Zen. At least I'll say. Um, all right, so here's the two units that are being put up on the big boy scale. One of them is the brand new to Japan, the Strike for Destiny Super Saiyan Gohan Teen, and the other one is Celios. Is that his name, Celis? Yeah, Celis. I'm trying to remember. Actually, did we? I there's a part of me that feels like we already did Celis. No, I, we did Great Saiyan Man. Um, and somebody else. We didn't do Celis. So. Did we do Celis? Damn. You know, me, and, me and Zen. We might have brought it up. We might have brought up. You know, I'm gonna just to be sure. I'm gonna look up for another unit because there's a part of me that feels like I've looked at this guy's second form and we've totally talked about him before. <laughs> so let's. Uh, Let's first start off with uh, the Super Saiyan. So we definitely have done already the LR Gobros and LR Broly, but we kind of did not talk about uh, the support guy. So let's just quickly run down what he does. He is a Super Saiyan Gohan teen, even though I think at this point he – is he actually a teen at this point? He's in high school. So, yes, that is actually yeah. – he's a teenager. Yeah, they've, they've miscategorized the whole teen thing for a while. I mean, like the one we call Teen Gohan has actually been, uh, you know, I guess – proactively or retroactively reconsidered to be a uh, youth Gohan. So yeah, he's actually a teenager when he's an adult, but, the, but the only issue I have with the teen Gohan thing is they still call him teen on his uh, super, super old resurrection F cards where it's like, he's actually an adult now. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Funny story. A long time ago, back when I was doing um silly tier list for the Reddit, I did a best of the best of the rest where I re where I ranked basically every single Gohan and I said I'm gonna do every teen and to adult Gohan and then Zen got on my case because I categorized some of the Gohans as adults and others as teens and he said well you're gonna have to pick a side because you're either gonna have to go with what Dokkan calls them or what they are because this entire <laughs> list just looks confusing so I said all right fuck you they're gonna be what Dokkan says he's all teens then. <laughs> Yeah, they'll say youth and teen. That's always bug me, man. But at least it's cool because you can use those to raise the super attack of some of the SSR. So yeah, you know <laughs> that is fair. That is actually pretty good. And let's look at uh, let's see. His leader skill is for movie heroes. It is three key at uh, one hundred twenty percent. I'm just gonna say one hundred twenty percent because everyone assumes it's HP attack and defense. If it's not, I'll yes, just, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, passive skill is movie hero category allies key plus two attack and defense forty percent and then attack and defense a hundred percent up when there's a movie boss's category enemy and he disables rampage. The the <laughs> I forget about the disabling rampage parts. And yeah, it's pretty pointless unless you're taking on a rampaging Broly event, which yeah. not all of them even do it. So whatever. Yeah, and he has basically the classic Gohan Link skills and the classic category. I think he doesn't have. Does he have? He does not have prepared for battle. No, he doesn't have it, but he also offsets it because the team he's designed to be on will always get access to the two key support anyway. Yeah. It's so it'd be nice, but he doesn't need it. Yeah. That's what I kind of feel. I feel like there's a good number of units. I think recently I was talking to Rack about Kid Goku and how I said, I don't think he really need. he doesn't need the extra key link because by a couple of turns, he'll already be 100% key su sufficient. It's everyone else around him needs yep. it, not not him. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing where you have like a very, very uh, thin line between self-sufficient units and units that are self-sufficient but not beneficial to others. So like you have self-sufficiency in terms of, oh, you can generate your own key like the kid Go uh, Goku, but he doesn't have the key links with 
most other units he'd be ran on the team with. Mm -hmm. You know, you can use him on his own team, and that's where he'd be able to prox like that Dragon Ball, I think that two key link and stuff. Uh, but not having access, and a lot of times with those types of units, they don't have like prepare for battle, they give him like Shattering the Limit, but he's a festival exclusive, so he's not getting Shattering the Limit. Um, but what I will say is, in terms of this Gohan, though, for example, he actually is uh, self-sufficient for himself and for the others because it's a support passive, and it offsets it. And then he's in a position where he at least has extra key from the uh, passive and from the link for having the Golden Warrior as well. So that's another key that he would get as well. So this is a little bit different, I guess. Yeah. But it would be, it still would be nice to have it, you know? It's just more or less, again, the major teams that he'd be applicable on, they don't necessarily need it. <laughs> yeah the funny thing is, is that i think some of the mindset i'm using is some of the old dokkan mindset where it was like no this unit needs to have this link in order to be good like remember when back in the day when over in the flash if you had that you were insta top tier which is why oh yeah three key was oh my goodness man back then that was too good that was way too good and nowadays it's like well you don't even super saiyan 3 vegeta even doesn't even need over in a flash anymore because it's like or it's like Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks where if you have over in a flash, it actually hurts the team because the yeah. only team you run them on or the teams you want to run them on don't want them to use the – don't want them to have too much key. But then you run into the problem of everyone has too much key and then you include supporters, which everyone uses nowadays. It's just different kind of mindset. So I'm not going to – Well, we also get to a point where there are so many units that have so many key links too. I mean a prime example of that is a character like SS4 Gogeta. Who doesn't have something like Saiyan Roar, which he could have had, but he was preordained. He was destined, man, to have the links he has. It's like he has shocking speed. Why? Because the man's insanely fast. He's definitely going to have that. He has GT. He's from GT. He's going to have that. Over in a flash, the fusion doesn't last long. He's going to have that. Fusion warrior. He's a fusion warrior. He's going to have that too. <laughs> All of these key links, man. <laughs> and funny enough, I think that's also what ended up um, screwing Master Roshi out of the Dragon Ball link. Which would have actually been super yeah. helpful. Because just I, I think I think with like. him though, I think I think there was probably a probably a sense of quote unquote balance. They exhibit that every so often, where it's like, eh, maybe we won't give this unit. That. You know, well, I think that's why mm -hmm. they didn't want to give him that twenty five percent attack link. Man, I swear they didn't. Oh, but it would have been. So we are never getting another Master Roshi TR until the LR Roshi trio. So <laughs> give me this one. <laughs> just give me this one. Yeah, I think I swear that's what they did. Because I looked at that, I was like, wait, what? He doesn't have, what is it, the Incredible Adventure? You I was like, it. really? Really? Yeah, so. The one team that you can, the, the only team he fits on that you can guarantee will always have that link, he does not have that link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to run him with Jackie Chan, and I was like, oh, wait, they actually aren't that great of link buddies. <laughs> well, yeah. They're not the same person, so of course they won't have the same link skills. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. And, and all snakes are going to tell me that uh, the Mass Saiyan is not future Goten Black. <laughs> <laughs> or that uh, Great Saiyan Man is actually uh, Gohan. None of these are true. They're two completely different people. Uh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But for this Gohan, I think he's a perfectly good support. It's even funny that he disables Rampage because I don't understand why they continue to give units this passive. It doesn't hurt them in the long run. It's just really funny. It's just kind of there. Um, it reminds me of the ones that are like, oh, heals with candy. It's like, okay, well, how often are you versus candy? Okay, cool. All right, whatever. It's just a thing, you know? Yeah. It's like a it's like a look into Dokkan's past where you remember, like, I remember when everyone was complaining about Broly. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless the ss3 and like some of the other ones like um uh do have rampage and i'm just not i'm blanking on it then it's it i guess is a little more relevant but still it's just something that's only relevant for a at most a handful of events yeah so and most of yeah broly you know what you know where that could be extra uh relevant is if they decide to produce a broly event similar to the legendary goku event where he has rampage and you need that and you need like blazing battle to really beat it oh. so that, that actually, might be something. I could see that them being doing something like that. That'd be interesting. If only because, like, I think Rampage ended up being the one of the, like... Because Soul versus Soul, I remember that kind of sucked because all it did was stop his healing. And then Kid Boo... And it was the, one key. Yeah. Bleh. And Kid Boo with the candy was just super annoying. <laughs> it wasn't any fun. But Rampage, I felt like, was actually pretty fun because you could use actual R characters and they would be able to, like, take less damage from the Rampage. Yep, yep. Then there was there was I remember at the time that the event came out, there was um it was mainly the super strike characters that had that link too, and you could use those characters pretty well. And uh yeah, soul versus soul. Um 
what was what was the other one? There's a what is it? Got a Supreme power. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. What's the English name for that one though? Damn it! The, here's the thing: is that I, I I know it, but I just currently can't remember. I just remember that they changed it, right? Because it was we got a power. Yeah, yeah, that's the one for that's the one for um the boo events, yeah. Yeah, it was the one for the boo events. I remember there was like a small thing from Japan going like, I can't believe they fucking changed the name of this. It was the greatest like. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, one of the I greatest can. Like names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's we got a power. It was changed to Supreme Power. Boom! There we go. Found. Yeah, I remember so long ago it used to be called we got a power oh that reminds me of some of the some of my top changes man like ss3 uh str goku's name change ching power man yeah that was weird. the uh the big ass hope goku which never got yeah <laughs> which, which i still have that ssr he can turn it to a tur but i'm not getting rid of the name of big ass hope it's just too much nostalgia <laughs> behind it uh oh, yes there was that the physical SR Goku was like sperm game indecent or something in, in sperm game incandescent yeah oh but those but those ones were uh those ones were just bad Google Translate so were they bad or were they just <laughs> amazing <laughs> the we got a power one was too good they changed that to supreme power um and then there's also so like they stopped doing the whole thing where they had the links for specific events so it was blazing battle we got a power aka supreme power and uh soul versus soul and i think those are the only ones yeah, yeah that's because those are like the first dokkan events for the most part no, no no they they have more they have the wall standing tall for gohan oh, uh we, with the booze i think i think that's there's only a handful there's there's got to be only a handful yeah because uh full power frieza ended up being his weakness was you got to kill him fast <laughs> And then Janemba's weakness was just Super Saiyans. So at a certain yeah. point, they started realizing, like, what if we just linked them to Link skills? Yeah, that exactly. Already existed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think the Gohan on the big boy scale is a uh, five out of five, though. I yeah, I think in terms of a uh, support that you need for, because up until this point, what were the really the supports for movie heroes? It was like uh, there weren't any. Basically, he was sorely needed. Yeah. Movie heroes pull them up they had access to, i think pandel was like their second best uh support um but again he was sorely needed that gohan is so good he's so good at dupe. yeah because you can use both versions of it for his ss because the base <laughs> he's one key 30 percent and everything else they had access to the great saiyan lr which is a defense and they have access to like orb changing support like STR Goten. Uh, they recently awoken the STR Videl, but she's not a guarantee support. Great chance of thirty percent to allies. So like this category really really needed support. Like they had Pan. It wasn't not Pandel. Excuse me. Uh, the reason why you have access to Pandel was your leader. He's a he's a duo leader, so you could dip. But uh, that's basically it, man. There wasn't anything. <laughs> it's pretty desolate, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I think a five out of five is fair for him. In terms of a support, yeah. he's basically everything you oh. would want out of a support. Hold on. The, the only other ones, pretty much, were all free-to-play unit. That's uh -huh. worth note, including but not limited to the great Saiyan cards in, in physical Videl and Gohan. Uh, so the Gohan from the Hirudagarn movie and then the Videl. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they are from yep. the Hirudagarn movie. Yep. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, five out of five. That's a respectable big boy right there. I'm always nice to the big boys, though. It's true. <laughs> I've heard that. That's why I watch your channel. <laughs> it's very big boy friendly. Uh, <laughs> next, uh, uh, next person we got here. This person I can confirm. Oh, you're never... breaking up. Oh, am I? It's it's because yeah. my internet is so bad. How bad is it? I'm not surprised. Uh, you well, I miss you for all I heard was. That's why I watch your channel. Very big. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're back. So it sounds it's, like you're good, though. It's a very big channel. If you have not checked out Defree's channel, you should check out his channel. I don't know if any of the... <laughs> if any of my eight, eight, close to 800 subscribers have not seen your hugely popular channel, they should totally check it out. Uh, next one, we, I can guarantee you we've never put this boy on the big boy scale. And there's for pretty good reasons. We're gonna put up uh, Baby Janemba, the brand new TUR Heroes unit. Uh, I can guarantee you we've never talked about this guy before. I, I'm gonna say right now we've never even talked about him until just this second. Oh my god! 
Uh, so let's see. His leader skill is nothing important. His passive skill is recovers 10% HP, attack and defense 80% at the start of the turn, high chance to evade enemy attack, including super attacks. And his categories are artificial life forms and only transformation boosts. You know, he actually holds a very special place in my heart, man. Uh-huh. He always has. Because one of my favorite all time Dokkan videos that I did was. Um, where I took the extreme AGL team versus uh, the Merge Zamasu event a few years ago, mm-hmm. and he was he was insanely good, like invaluable there. So he holds a very special place in my heart. And that was back before, of course, he he uh, got his buff. That was that was pre. I said extreme AGL, excuse me. I took mono AGL. This is pre potential system. This is pre, uh, of course, uh, awakening for him because that just came out but i'm talking back when 70 percent meta Murd zamasu just came out his dokkan event was there that event was especially hard Murd zamasu at the time he's still or a few i guess but at the time was the only like twice in a turn they felt like they made that event specifically to dick over super vegito who was just running through everything in the game at the time and uh one, i had to really 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 sit there and put out like for my team concept, I had to really sit there and like, okay, that's when like the game really, really required a lot of strategy. It kind of does for some of the newer stuff like the Goku event because you can't bring anything there. Mm-hmm. But um, but at the time, I had to really sit there and think it through. And I came across the Janemba, and he was incredibly helpful. And at the end, for like comparison sake, some of the other units, I think I was using Murasaki. I was using Murasaki or Oceanic. Yeah, Murasaki. Yeah, I know you're a fan. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan of Murasaki. Yeah. Yeah, so like 70% meta. Geneva was incredibly helpful for the healing and 5,000 attack and defense. He didn't dodge because that wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, but it was before he was dodge. Helpful. Yeah, it was, it was 100% pre-potential system. It wasn't in the game yet. And that especially made everything hard because you got to think there was no crit. There was no such thing as crit. So like since there was no crits, I'm taking a team, and that's something I loved to do a lot early on that I can't really do as much now, taking a team that had complete disadvantage no way around it but to fight it so just chip damage 20k 30k 40k counter hits because <laughs> they were so weak back then too <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, it, it was a really weird time especially since back in the day extreme agl was like their leader ended up being super 17 who was like oh yeah see that's a little bit later though because that's after we've moved in past the ss4s and into the 120 really i'm talking pre ss4s Pre two wow. year, yeah. <laughs> that is that is that is actually extremely tough. As someone who is actually also trying to do a lot of that, where Super Vegeta was my only leader throughout the entire uh, meta, so I remember <laughs> Merge Zamasu being a big pain in the ass because I actually pulled two of them and I had to switch to a um, bootleg uh, villains team with him in it. <laughs> and that 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 event was like no joke up until the point where they released the potential system and it became a joke but yep yep exactly yeah so i think you know to be fair to his dokkan i think his dokkan got basically as he actually became super usable the only thing he's not usable on are is the the big ass goku event at the very last stage where d- d- dodging is disabled and hit where you i did not know this until you told me that hit disables uh dodge as well at the end yep so I yep. Mean, but yeah he's just i think he ended up being perfectly fine the only thing that i the only thing that's weird about him is that he's literally so focused on dodge <laughs> that it hurts in the it only hurts in like the big end game stuff where dodge ends up being something where you can't use but most people aren't going to be playing that or using him specifically for that fight anyway so yeah um so if you can't if you can't use his dodge he's he's honestly just decent because he has an average or a little i guess at this point a little bit below average uh percentage boost 80 percent isn't spectacular Mm -hmm. uh the healing and the defense down become the best things that this unit does so not a ton of units have massive defense down Uh, a lot of them just may have great but not a whole lot have massive which is 80 percent for three turns and on that goku event it's one of uh a very select uh few number of events that you can actually defense down the enemy so that becomes very important that coupled with the healing now the issue with the healing is you probably take too much damage simply with janemba 
uh, <laughs> to make <laughs> to make it to the point where it doesn't offset the damage. So like 10%, you're probably taking more than 10% between a couple of hits on Janemba if you can't dodge yeah. because 80% defense just isn't enough. <laughs> but it's it's conceptually good. Yeah. And also he gets added to the category, well, transformation boost does not need him, but artificial life forms does need him in the sense of that there's just not a lot of units for artificial life forms. Yeah, yeah, they need him. So for me personally, I think I think I'd give him um just because I can see the flaws in the unit and I, I appreciate what he is and the teams that he's applicable to. Uh Transformation boost doesn't need him because that category always gets like every new unit anyway. It's true. But um, artificial life forms did need him. That category actually doesn't even have a main leader yet. They have the baby leader, but they don't have like a 170 and beyond or whatever. I don't think they'll get a beyond, but you get my point. Mm. Um, so they needed him for sure. So other than that, I'll say three. I'm going to go give him a th- uh, because of usability versus harder content. He's a he's an absolute god versus easier content, though. Or like even average or not average but just kind of like the lower scale of harder content like some of the sbr stages for example you could take him versus extreme agl and he'll be a complete monster there you know stuff yeah. like that as long as you can dodge i think he ends up being fantastic in that sense so i think exactly yeah i think a three out of five is fair i would usually i think no wait i have to remember this doesn't apply to you but it does apply to me baby does suffer from the fact that he's from gt and on the on on our on our specific big boy scale all gt units that are not giru or pan automatically suffer a minus two so he gets down <laughs> to, he gets a one out of five for me so <laughs> combined our scores together and that is a two out of five for this boy pretty respectable for a gt unit considering that uh lr super saiyan 4 hey Goku. he he's not gt because he doesn't have the gt link he's not gt Okay, you know what? I'm willing to listen to that. That he's not GT, so I'll put him back at three out of five. He's not GT because he's heroes. <laughs> You're right. You're right, and I can't judge Baby on his heroes performance if I have not seen him on heroes yet. <laughs> so yeah, three of three out of five. You saved your you saved your boy here from going down lower. <laughs> good, good. So those are the two on the big boy scale. Two pretty different units, too. It's nice having someone here that uh, plays a lot of Dokkan that can speak about Dokkan. Because usually with me and Zen, it just ends up turning into just shitting on the unit or going into a completely different direction. Oh, man. I'm not surprised, though. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Because Zen always did shit on the units. He did. He does. <laughs> we still do. And that's why we're here. Um... Now, with the big boy scale all said and done, we will now move on to questions. Again, if you want to answer questions, you wait for me to ask for them on Twitter, or you can just send them straight to YouTube, and YouTube will get a priority for questions. So let's oh. let's start with some YouTube questions. We ended up getting a lot of uh, YouTube questions, and I want to say it's specifically because you were on the episode and you said, I'll be back next week. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so as opposed Whoops. to the as opposed to the usual like one or zero questions we got, I think we got around three. So let's let's go ahead and answer, get into these questions. Uh, this comes from your boy Chips Ahoy, who asks favorite part of your least favorite game. Oh, he also told me that Fing Fang Foom is a Chinese dragon, and that is related to when we were talking about uh, how many Chinese villains exist in comic books besides the Mandarin from Marvel. Fing Fang Foom is also a Chinese villain. Uh, I just don't think he's on the same level as the Mandarin. Anyway, I digress. What is your favorite part of your least favorite game? I don't think I have a least favorite game. I definitely don't have a favorite part. You don't have a game that you just can't stand? No, not really. What about Blazing? Do you? <laughs> what about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can say something about Blazing. That's not at the bottom of my list, but right. I mean, I don't. I don't have a list really. Um, I don't see the thing about blazing is I haven't really played it seriously for like a year, so I don't know if anything's changed. All right, you know that's fair. You don't. I'm not. The, gonna force I, you, you know what? You know what I can say mm-hmm. is about blazing specifically because you threw that one out there. The the fact that they've always had, and I'm sure they still do have those fake uh, five stars, five stars. Yeah, fake golds, whatever. They're, I, yeah, I, I forget the rarities. Fake golds. Yeah, yeah, the fake golds where it's just an awoken version of basically a silver. Like, no, please, no. And I've always hated that. It's the dumbest thing to me. I've always hated it. I don't understand. It reminds me so much of when Dokkan used to do that stupid stuff, too. But oh, they stopped. 
where they used to have those freaking uh, banners where the scouter would break endlessly over. You still can actually see it, it do that when you summon on the Kai banner, but like it would just break endlessly and act like you were getting a bunch of SSRs, but really it was just the Awoken SRs. And it was like, damn, this sucks so bad. Because you could summon Awoken SRs as SSRs. And you can also summon uh, Awoken SSRs as URs on those banners. If I recall correctly. You're Level correct. 80 or like something like that. I don't know. Like it was, I don't know. It back, just Back when medals that, were hard to get. Yeah, that was, no, no, no. I hate You hated that. Uh, funny mm-hmm. enough, I think something that has this a similar thing, but um, way worse, was Or Collection, where everything could be a five. So getting a guarantee. Oh yeah, Or Collection did it too. Yeah, only Or Collection was worse because every unit could go five. Yeah. So it was possible to get. I think one time I actually this actually did happen where I got the guaranteed five. It was some uh, random five that I didn't need, and then the actual limited unit came in as a three. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure it happened in one of our videos for Or Collection. Yeah, ah oh, man, rest in peace, Or Collection forever. Go check out all. Don't the... worry, number two is coming out one day, did, did and you, it's not going to be anywhere near the same. Did you hear that uh, recently? Or Collection just passed its two year anniversary, and we still have no info on when Or Collection two is coming out. Wow, is Or Collection one still uh, playable? Server still yeah. up? Server still up. You can still play PvP, and you can still log in. So, so they, 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 why did they even stop it? Like, you had a whole, like, year. I guess because they didn't want to keep releasing units and then also go on the faith that we're making a game in the background. We can't make you spend money. It's really funny that they were like, we're not going to let you spend money on this because it'd be a waste when it's like. But, but they have the servers up. I actually have no so they're idea. spending money and not making any money no. back. But is it really? <laughs> let me tell you, there's about thirty people at most currently playing War Collection because I see the PvP rankings. Do you know how? Uh, what gets you in the top ten now? You need at least a rank of over nineteen hundred. That shit's wow. insane at the peak of War Collection. <laughs> That's wow. Yeah. So you um. So like, with, uh, if I recall correctly, your currency does get transferred, so there is still incentive to play. There is. You at least log in every day is what I what I do, or at least I try to do, because the more logins you have, the more stuff you get that will transfer into Or Collection Two. We still have no idea when Or Collection Two is going to come in. It says sometime twenty nineteen, but well, I'll keep I'll keep updating. Just keep trying to look. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Also, should be fun. Yeah, should be fun. Also, it looks like Zen is not going to be able to join us because he's on uh, solo house duty. So it's just going to be me and you for the remaining of the show. Oh, gotcha. That'll be fun, too. Yeah, that's fun. It's um, always fun, just me and you and my boy, Wokey. Yeah, we should do more videos together. We just need to figure out something that we both... <laughs> well, I usually just tell you, hey, I have a game I want to play. you mind sitting in on it? And then you say yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> it's true. But for me I'm generally make- able to make make time and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Recording yeah. with friends is fun. Yeah, as long as Zen's not on, I'm on. There you go. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, your boy Chips Ahoy. Uh, <sighs> next question comes in from Agent Venom. He asks, with Zen technically having a DB Legends account again and you not getting totally shafted this anniversary, is there any hope for uh for a re-emergence of legends road work or has the government continued the shutdown also if d3 Yikes. does return do any of you have intentions of posting dragon ball heroes video- vids do any okay uh Thank world you. mission i assume i i um i i want to get back into it you know that game it, it it suffered an unfair fate because the problem with that game was not a lot of people could really play it on PvP. For example, like Dino was trying to make videos on it, but he couldn't play PvP because he was he wasn't even able to get online. Basically, he was having server issues. Mm. So I want to bring it back. I want to play it more. Um, but I'll have to figure out the logistics of being able to play and stuff a little bit more reliably. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, from what I remember, when you started some Dragon Ball Heroes videos, you were specifically going like, "I want to get this." Is like here's an early test video of me kind of playing the game in the beginning but if this comes back i want to actually be like fully into the game because that seems to be kind of your the way your videos are structured which is always fun is that you the game you're usually playing you know a good amount and if you don't know a good amount you bring someone in to be like well i'm playing but if i can't speak truth to this game i brought someone at least to help me <laughs> during this yeah part. that was you for my uh or collection yeah or collection <laughs> and regalia <laughs> so i'm there yeah basically 
<laughs> but even for stuff like Legends, you bring in Goresh for when it's like, well, that deep dive hour long video you guys did for yeah, him. Yeah, we had a good laugh about how that video was literally an hour long. <laughs> it's really long. It's it's, it's very informative too because it's like two. It's it's a different way of like looking into Legends, but for something like Dragon Ball Heroes, it did. You know, I I did remember hearing about that because I was actually thinking like th- that thing started off so hot, but then. I guess what happened is that just a good amount of people couldn't actually get into PvP. And without, like, the daily, like, uh, being able to, like, change up the video. Otherwise, you're just doing the same stage over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, it can be so it, I mean, the whole thing about that game is it does have untapped potential anyway. And, I mean, it has that whole arcade mode that people were starting to play a bit. But it kind of just died out because of the uh, no n- the inability to play online for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, otherwise, a lot of you know other YouTuber friends and stuff would have done more videos on it. So I would like to do more, and I actually have been planning on uh, kind of doing a little bit of what Dino's doing and playing some older games. One of the ones I'm going to boot up here pretty soon. I have to order another PlayStation Three controller. Uh, well, power cord, even though it's the regular. The one I had, the old PlayStation Three I had, was the original. So it's basically just a PC cord anyway. The super thick one with the three prongs. Um, but one thing I'm going to boot up is uh, Battle of Z again. So that's going to be pretty fun. Because I've always loved that game and everybody always hated that game. So it'll be fun. So maybe I can also mix in uh, a little bit of um, uh, Heroes back on the channel. Did you ever actually pick up Heroes? I did pick up Heroes. The problem is is that gotcha. my Switch Joy-Con is busted. I suffered the great fate of all early adopted Switch controllers where one day the drift happened and then it never recovered. So... <laughs> So the, the thing that sucked is every time I was like, I need to put this uh, dude in pos- into position, my controller would immediately start going up and I couldn't fucking play anymore. So it was like, I can't I can't actually deal with this busted ass controller. And then around the time I was about to get a controller, let's just say life came crashing down. So unfortunately I had to stop playing Dragon Ball Heroes for a bit. But I totally had yeah. the game and I liked it. Uh, the only thing that was uh, ended up driving me away was just like I didn't have the right controller to play it. But it was I, I like Heroes a whole bunch. The only reason I don't make videos on it is because I don't have an Elgato or something. That's why uh, most people from here get um, emulated Game Boy Advance games is because I don't really have access to any of the good stuff right now. No, no, that's fair. You you make do with what you have. So I'm just I'm glad that uh, you had the opportunity to at least play it a little bit because yeah. <laughs> it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really fun, and I like um, a, a lot of Dragon Ball games where you can just screw around and do whatever you want and that was a, in that game there was a lot of just screwing around and trying to see what worked what didn't and that was fun it was also really a different kind of game that you don't see from i guess dragon ball kind of games because most yeah. of them are usually either fighting games or action games and for to have it to be like a half card game half strategy thing was pretty cool yeah especially um one thing that was cool about that game is we don't get that type of stuff localized so it was nice just to see it make its way out here to be honest I was very excited about that overall. The uh, fact that it just came out this way because we don't ever see that stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And as for the other questions for uh, Legends Roadwork, so this, who be released used to have a sister podcast or whatever these kind of videos are because I don't act. I think uh, you they get an RSS feed to be considered a podcast. But either way, I digress. Was Legends Roadwork where we did the same thing with Legends on the Legends Big Boy scale? The problem that we got ran into was that suddenly. Uh, the legends love died in <laughs> died in the great purge of all the players being gone and the anniversary <laughs> as things got worse and right now with db legends i just don't i just don't got it in me i especially after i went for the android there was a part of me that was like i'm gonna spend the four thousand i got currently saved i don't i don't buy, buy any of the uh, the cc packs at all so i'm like i all i want is at least one new sparking and i literally just got three old sparkings and the rest were just complete garbage multis and i go why do i even bother with legends anymore like i don't like the current meta i have a god team but i don't i don't like using them i don't like i don't like playing it as much as i used to and i feel some of that has to do with the fact that the current meta of the units i just don't like fighting like i don't think fighting super vegeto is very fun at all i don't think super vegeto every fat uh fat (laughs) match every fucking match like no thank you like maybe if it felt like Maybe if it didn't feel like because I didn't have a Super Vegito that I didn't have to play 10 times better than the other person to stand a chance. Didn't fit me. Yeah, it, it feels like the game put Super Vegito literally in every match. Like, every player pulled him. Yeah. 
<laughs> I swear, it feels like every single player pulled him. And, you know, say what you want about the meta of regen. I always felt that regen was at least fair enough to beat if you were smart about it. Like, there was no way for Perfect Cell to usually one-shot your entire team when uh, you had the advantage of 3-1, to one, unless you played very bad. With Super Vegito, yeah. you could play literally your best, and you could still lose. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, is yeah Super Vegito and, you know, Regen did carry to some extent. It just kind of depends. Like, we've always had... Uh, kind of metas or setups in this game where it feels like you know you can come in with uh, just about any sort of team and get carried by that team or a character on that team and it feels like fusions is the most recent example of a team like that now yeah so maybe when there's more anti-fusion dudes out there or maybe when they released a uh, female rising banner three let's see <laughs> one day man those those one they'll they, i don't know if they have any plans you know they're they're planned months ahead out anyway like a handful if not more months ahead out but um uh, hopefully they do have the female banner version three because females are good simply because there isn't an anti-female warrior there could be one but it's definitely not meta and i'm pretty sure there isn't but there isn't a female anti and but what they do have is if you have the units they have absurdly good rebrand who's still if not s plus tier or z tier she's way up there right yeah. uh it's very good also um they have access to the the great Saiyan 2 who's anti-lineage which is also kind of in the meta kind of out but they also do have access to uh the anti saiyan with Khalifla. they have like they have meta checks yeah. all over the place anti-sun uh, goku with chi chi even though and, yeah anti-sun family it's not as relevant as it was a, a month or two ago but still <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have meta checks everywhere with females and then also you have uh good yellow characters as well to handle or deal with at least to some extent super vegito too yeah so you can you can kind of make do with females i think i think so i just think that i would like to see uh because <laughs> rising girls is what eventually that was my first meta team and it'll always be my favorite meta team so if there was anything that would get uh, get me back into and ask actually being able to be like Zen, we need to record a Legends Road work. I'm gonna be taking control over this. It would be that um, there's a new Rising Girls banners, and I'm actually able to get one of them. <laughs> it has to be one of those <laughs> type of situations. No, I don't blame you at all. Yeah, they um, the, just in general, they're very fun to play with. I hope they do bring out more uh, girl banners. They do have Rosie and Kakunsa in the game's files, and I believe they're a part of the story mode with Ribrianne, so maybe we get those next time? Yeah, I don't that, know. That'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, in terms of an anti-female warrior, it should totally be that Bojack that throw that at the end when he's about to get killed by Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Or Beerus. Uh, or maybe Beerus is too edgy. Yeah, Beerus is too edgy. It just His uh, super attack is just the slap. <laughs> so Yeah, it, that, that might be too edgy. <laughs> it'd be really good, though. Yeah, Beerus would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, next question comes in from this one's gonna be easy because I just don't know what it is. This comes from Natlid B, and he says, "Who has better YouTube friendly music to you? No copyright sounds or Monster Cat." And I don't know who either of those are, so I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't heard of Monster Cat. I've only listened to No Copyright Sounds before. The music's pretty good for the most part if you're into that type of style that they use. Mm. So. I, you know, as someone who constantly looks for music for uh their for whatever random Dokkan video i have to put up to music uh it's really easy just to lean into video game music because usually for the most part they're safe from copyright yeah i do that too i just kind of use video game music now it's a little easier so. it's, just, it's just easier it's easier than finding like a cover of something and being like hopefully they don't monetize this even though like my channel literally like only like 60 something people are gonna look at this do you really i don't and i'm also not monetizing it at all because i can't yet so if you want to take money from this, I guess go for it because I'm not getting any money from it. <laughs> but it's interesting. And finally, this is the last YouTube question. I think it's actually pretty interesting. And he says, this is from Genrado. I don't think this started as like a question for us, but he's asking this, and I think it's uh, good to have you on here for this one. It's a, he says, is it just me or has the Dokkan community down, down, died down a lot? So... I can't really speak to the Dokkan community because as, even though I make Dokkan stuff, I've never felt like I was, except for my direct uh, lying to you and Rhyme and some of the other dudes like that, I've never felt like super connected to what the current community is like doing and thinking. So as someone who constantly has to make Dokkan stuff, what do you feel about that? 
Do you think um, it's dying down a bit, or do you think it's as strong as it could be? Or? I don't know, man. It, it's, it's in a weird spot. Like, they haven't hit first in a while uh, for the sales. And I, I, I believe some of that's partly because of... Um, what's been coming out like i don't i think it's been since the super saiyan goku came out that they haven't hit first in sales um that also lined up with the anniversary for legends and just weird stuff it just feels like right now it's not in the best spot but i'm not gonna say it's dying or it's dead or anything like that of course because it's not at least not dead it could be kind of dwindling down a little bit but i can tell you something from a youtuber's perspective too Mm -hmm. even viewership is down for for all of it but like for dokkan viewership is down a decent amount you know um whether it's me or other people we've all kind of noticed it so it does also extend to that to that side of things where it's like okay people aren't also searching up this stuff as often you know so but also i do want to consider that if it's down right now it'll be fine another five or six months because we'll be looking at the anniversary for jp again (laughs) so we'll be fine so it's kind of just like a weird like just a weird spot yeah like a like a summer lull for Dokkan, especially because now that Legends has started to get, uh, I think it, it, there's no there's a, there's some correlation to the fact that as Legends got closer to the first year, that that's when Dokkan views started to go down a bit. So maybe it's just yeah, more- and Legends views have actually picked up a little bit too. Uh, it was uh, but it lies to so. Uh, okay, you cut out super hard at that point, so you want to try and say that again? Oh. Good as Dokkan, but... Okay, that is... No? No, that's still... there. I was actually trying to see if you were still going through it, but there was still a heavy uh, cut. This is maybe just something <laughs> with, between you and Discord now, because I know... Yeah, I guess I can't say what I was going to say, so I guess it'll just never be known. Dun, dun, dun. All right, actually, go to your go to your channel when you eventually talk about Dokkan to figure out uh, what you were trying to say. But yeah, I think it's interesting. Okay, man. Uh, I think it's interesting because I think as Dokkan gets bigger, there's just going to be points where people leave, and then there will be times when people come back, and it's always going to be around anniversary type things, like. I can't help but feel like if if the if the Go Brothers and LR Broly were released before Global, there would be more of a big of a like there'd be more hype around the fact of like oh shit, a brand new LR, let's get it. But now that for some reason like it's the opposite effect where in Japan units are based off of like okay, we know how good they are, let's pull on them right now. It's before the anniversary, it's a good time to pull. Or but that doesn't work for Japan, where if Global gets them first, they usually end up becoming just kind of ignored when they hit Japan. Like, same thing happened to Hit, and the same thing has so far happened to Go Rose. And we're about to see if it happens to Broly, but there's also a good chance maybe people are just waiting for Broly. <laughs> waiting for yeah, Broly. yeah, that too. It's just interesting that um, what's happened since, pretty much, the Goku came out and Frieza, and then we're now at Gohan and, and Goten, and then we're going to be moving into Broly. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it still doesn't hit first. And this is actually, again, it's not a it's not a huge deal, but this is a game that basically with each celebration for a long time hit at least once first place. Yeah. Sometimes even multiple times, you know? So it's kind of interesting to see that that's happened. And I don't know if it's because of the fact that it came out on global first and JP players in that scenario get the chance to do what global players do, where... They- they uh, get to prioritize. Maybe if something comes out, like, for example, the Heroes banner, which is pretty niche and some people might want, other people might not care about. And knowing that there's a Broly and Gohan, uh, Broly and then a separate card for Gohan and Goten coming out soon, maybe you save and prioritize. Hmm. So I- I'm guessing that's just what happened. But I can't, you know, I think I think as high as the, go- I- again, if I missed something, forgive me if anybody's listening and I might have missed something because it's, it's entirely possible. I haven't been able to be as into the Dokkan verse as I used to be five, six, seven months ago where I'd be up all hours of the night reporting news. Now I mostly just kind of let truth do that and I don't even bother doing it most of the time anymore because I can't be because fatherhood now. <laughs> um, yeah. So if I missed anything, let me know. But again, I think as high as the SS Goku got, the transforming Goku was like second place. Something like that in sales. He got really close, but nothing else since. Nobody really cared for Frieza. So I, I'm pretty sure that didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, the only person that cared was like Goresh. So yeah, <laughs> it was like yeah. And I know, I know my boy Truth goes for 
everything. So I'm sure he got him too. But uh, yeah. most people, I'd say, probably didn't care too much about. <laughs> I think it's safe yeah. to say, you know. Yeah, you know, I feel like his time was <laughs> close to a year ago when they came when it was like the Namek theme. That was the perfect time to release them, and then they ended up releasing something of the fusions instead. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's just weird. So it's, it's very weird. So we'll see. You know, I think the Dokkan community is going to just have random slumps. But thank you for the question, Generato. It's very. Uh, it was very. It actually made got me thinking. Like I don't know, maybe because I also think that just in general, some gotchas that used to be like golden cows that were like sacred, like the idea of like um, like even in Fake Grand Order, who the running joke is, uh, you don't need to do anything. They just hit number one. It actually took, they were in a long slump where they weren't uh, number one for a very long time. And they actually were able to dip down out of the top 10, which hadn't happened in years. So maybe there's wow. just a thing of like, maybe people are expecting more from their gotchas now. Because <laughs> all these new gotchas are coming out and they're either friendlier or they have better animations. But yeah, they're putting a lot of work into them now. I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised, man. That's That's definitely a thing, I'm sure. So right. yeah, so let's see. Thank you for the question, and now we'll get into some Twitter questions. I don't know how much longer we got you for, but I'm going to guess it's not very long. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, at this point, we need to pick up the pace just a little bit. <laughs> All right. These will be very simple because we, uh, we don't have as much of these, and they'll be pretty cool. easy. So we'll go fast round. This one comes from Spiff uh, slash Aura, who asks, if you could switch two characters' powers, who would it be? Their example is giving Dio King Crim Crimson or something. Uh, I think it'd be really funny if Krillin could go Super Saiyan. <laughs> that's what i'll say <laughs> yeah i'll go with that perfect thank you for the question next question comes in from kevin ax who asks who was what was your first episode of dragon ball of the entire franchise you ever watched and which character became your favorite after you got more into the series uh so this is something that's not going to happen to which anybody. was the first episode you ever watched yeah so remember like back you broke the, up a bit yeah the first episode you ever saw of dragon ball in general because back in the day, you know, Toonami was a thing, and sometimes you would just catch during a specific arc. Yeah. So, what was? Your, do you remember mm -hmm. your first one from that point? I want to say my first one e was the one where Piccolo dies. <laughs> that was like my first episode. Oh, wow. Um, I think I think for me, my earliest I think Dragon Ball memory, uh, I was about five. It, it, I was, and it might have been on my birthday. They are around the time of my birthday because I remember some of the stuff that I had it was pretty new. Um, and this was during the initial run of uh, of, of Dragon Ball on Toonami. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, and I, I think that it was late at night and I wound up catching it on TV. Uh, like you just kind of mentioned, you kind of just did sometimes, right? But um, it, it, it was, and I'm pretty sure it was in the Goku versus Frieza fight where Namek is about ready to explode. You know, post five, and yeah, <laughs> huh. that's what I remember. So, all right, and I think we don't need to ask you who's your favorite Dragon Ball character. I think we know it's your boy Krillin. Yeah, yep, Krillin. He's so wholesome. Man. He, he gets a lot of hate. People like that don't understand that the series isn't only about fighting. Only kind of don't really understand. But Krillin, character, and characters in the series. So huge fan. Yeah. And I'll say uh, I'll go with Goku. I really like Goku, and people. Uh, I think with a lot of modern day smart people who want to criticize Goku, and I say just you know get off his ass, <laughs> just get off of him. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, next question. Thank you for the question, Kevin. Next question, real quick, comes in from Mind Eyed Hawk, who asks, "What would your guys' custom stands be?" Just recently got into JoJo because of Zen, right? And it's been very fun to watch. And then he says, "Also, if D Free is there, he asks, are you my poppy?" I am definitely your poppy. There you go. It, my answer would be, we don't have time to answer this without Zenrod here, so we'll have to save that for next week. <laughs> my answer stays the same. Maybe not. We'll see. It just depends on... Yeah. Uh, this person comes in from Soup, who says, what's your biggest motivation and who is your favorite artist slash band? He says, who or what is your biggest motivation and who is your favorite artist slash band? Uh, biggest motivation um probably my family because i want to i want to be able to continue doing what i'm doing and sustain our lifestyle and do better and just that type of stuff mm -hmm. um band one i kind of when i was younger and i was um singing which is a whole different story because yeah I, I sing and i've sung r&b type style music for 
over a decade now. Um, I would, uh, when I was newer, I would listen to other artists and try to model my style after what they did and just try to take different things from them. So it was like Usher, Neo, Chris Brown back then, and just a lot of stuff like that. For me personally, I had, nowadays, I kind of just listen to a lot of pop, though. I, I don't have a lot of music that I listen to do so i can't really answer mm. <laughs> i just listen to a lot of podcasts and you know like videos kind of like this where we're just talking you know and it's just something it's like it's a podcast basically so that's what i listen to yeah i do i do a lot of the basically if i could say that it would be for podcasts i just listen to a bunch of those usually giant yeah. bomb for the most part or if i go into other videos of people just talking about whatever game i'm currently playing so usually if I want to see a Legends breakdown, whether or not I should summon, I'll go <laughs> see one of your videos or something. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That's pretty much it for me. That's just all I do. Yeah. As podcasts and other dad's stuff. <laughs> yeah. And as, as for motivation, actual life motivation is always, like you said, it's family. Family is what keeps you going. Family Definitely. Is, family is what keep me, kept, keeps me in my job, even though I constantly want to f- fucking just completely lose my shit every single day I work there. And for in terms of YouTube, I always look towards uh, you and Zen for actually uploading videos. So it's always <laughs> like, all right, let me see what they're doing currently. That seems pretty good. Maybe I'll try doing these uploading things, <laughs> and then I do it. <laughs> Maybe I shall do more uploads. <laughs> There you go. Maybe I should do uploads. Obviously, I've seen enough videos from you now where if I actually learn how to talk by myself, that'd be a great asset to have as opposed to being only with people. You just got to do it, man. Yeah. You just got to go on and, and do it more and you'll get comfortable. That's all it is. Yeah. One of these days. But yeah, that, those are the basic motivations. And that is all we've got time for questions, everyone. Thank you for everyone for sending in a question. Sorry if your question did not get answered, but hopefully you enjoyed the question, the, the episode. Regardless, I want to thank again our guest, D Free, for giving his valuable time to us. Even though Zen did not show up because he was eating a sandwich. <laughs> but then he ended up being called away for taking care of the house, so nothing he oh, could do. God. No problem, man. Definitely happy to be here anytime. Yeah, always good to have you on. We have to. I'll have to remember. There are some people who just be like, uh, "Why don't you guys just do actual video game like of, of just each other?" That's it. It's like, well, that's a good. That's a pretty good idea. If only I had a better setup that wasn't just a laptop that like burned hot trying to run anything over a GBA game. It would be definitely something I would want to do. But, you know. Yeah. 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 This. Look for stuff in the future. Just wait and hold on. Until next time, uh, this has been us. Go check out DeFree's channel. As always, check it out. Say good- oh, I have to say the goodbye theme for fucking to be released. I just remembered it. All right, ready? DeFree, at the end of what I'm about to say, I need you to say that's no good. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I can. Okay. All right, everyone. Remember, kids, don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's definitely pretty good. (laughs) All right. Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) See ya.